very much for your presence. Uh, we have the pleasure today to have uh, Professor Bruno Duin with us uh, at uh, UNAM in, this in, in the Institute of Engineering. So he's going to give uh, a talk about uh, superconductivity and its application and what they are doing in the University of Lorraine, France. Uh, Professor Duin uh, uh, studied in uh, in the same university, the University of Lorraine. He got his PhD in this university, uh, and uh, since 2014, he's professor uh, full time uh, at the University of Lorraine. Uh, he has published more than 50, 40 uh, papers in international journals. Um, he's a chairman of Magnet Technology Conference and other conferences as well. He wrote uh, chapters, uh, various chapters in books. His main uh, interest is the characterization of superconductors, including the influence of the magnetic field and temperature, and as well the applications of superconductors in electrical engineering. So I'm going to uh, uh, let uh, Professor Duin uh, present uh, what they are doing in, uh, in France. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Frédéric, for your Sorry. introduction. No, okay. Okay. Uh, today, uh, I will present some uh, slides about applied superconductivity in electrical engineering. Uh, in the same time, from my, my lab and from other labs in the, in the world, and speci especially uh, lab, I uh, worked for them. Okay. So I am a professor of electrical engineering of University of Lorraine. The University of Lorraine, no, Lorraine is a region north in northeast of France between Paris and Strasbourg, if you know a little bit. And uh, my group, it's a group of research in electrical engineering of Nancy. It's a lab, okay, around 20, 20 uh, people. OK, so my outline. Uh, first, I will present some uh, things about my uh, lab, and especially my, uh, my group. Second, uh, uh, presentation about the physics, uh, some physics, very basic physics on superconductivity. And finally, I will present a lot of applications in electrical engineering. So, uh, Green uh, uh, Lab is a research uh, lab, and we have a team specialist on applied superconductivity. We are eight, uh, we are nine, number, uh, nine members as professors and doctors. Uh, the team leader is uh, Professor uh, Levesque, and we have uh, uh, now uh, eight PhD students uh, are working on uh, applied superconductivity, uh, especially on motor. W uh, bad things, we have just half uh, of a technician, because half of the technician is for research, half for uh, teaching. You know. And we have no permanent engineer. so. A lot of, uh, sometimes we have to work on practical things. You, you will see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, devices and so on. So we have to, uh, as professor, I have to make a lot of things, you know, special of our, of, uh, of, of uh, our um, team. Normally a professor has just to make courses, make order, and that's it. In my case, it's not the case. So. <laughs> okay, so we have a lot of uh, academic collaborations in the world, especially uh, first the first one uh, with KIT. KIT, it's a big uh, consortium of lab uh, in Karlsruhe. It's one of the, the, the two uh, main lab in uh, Germany. Uh, you have uh, in Germany, you have Wiesleim, Karlsruhe Institute for Technology, and you have another one in um, uh, Aachen, in Aachen. So it's one of the two best labs in, the, in, the, in Germany. And in this big lab, around 5,000 uh, permanent uh, technician, professor, and so on, you have the group of Professor Matthias Noe and Dr. Francesco Grilli about applied superconductivity, especially for uh, ITER, fusion, and so on. Uh, the second big collaboration is uh, with Saarland University, Dr. Koblishka, with Ecole, Ecole Polytechnique, uh, uh, Saarland is in Germany, sorry, uh, with Ecole Polytechnique de, Mont de Montreal, 
uh, in Quebec, in Canada, with Professor Sirwa. In uh, Houston, with Professor uh, Philippe Masson, or Philippe Masson in French because he's French. You know, it's, uh, I was uh, in uh, in my lab for PhD with him uh, in the same time. Okay, uh, with uh, University of Liège in in uh, Belgium, Professor Van der Bemden. Uh, in Algeria, we have uh, two collaboration with Alger and uh, Remis Miliana, a little, uh, little university in Algeria. With Frederic Trio, so it's not the last one, but it's just uh, in terms of chronology, you know. So <laughs> but it's uh, one of the biggest ones, okay. And with, uh, with some French labs, so uh, LNCME, it's a lab on high magnetic field, very high. With uh, Grenoble Electrical Engineering Laboratory, but Mr. Uh, Professor Tixador, Institut d'Engin Labour in Nancy, with Professor Margin, Margin Chris Mott Laboratory, with Professor Nudem and Bernstein about uh, uh, superconducting bulk, you will see, and with GIPS Lab in Paris with Dr. Kevin and Dr. Kameni. We have also a lot of indi industrial collaborations. First one and the most important one is uh, with Jemont Electric. We have uh, now a project just finished, I think, this year or the next year. Uh, project uh, RANS about supercooling motor, more of for application for submarine, for example. We have another one we convert in. Convert in is a French company. Now it's General Electric because General Electric uh, bought a lot of little company in, in the world. So now it's General Electric. So we had a project, it'll come up. It was a European project I will present. With DCNS, it's a French industrial group special, specialized in uh, naval defense and uh, energy. Uh, we had a, a, pro a project with, about uh, super clean motor. With Arbus Group and uh, Hispano Suiza, Safran Group ab about aircraft, because uh, since uh, for four years they, are, they have interest in superconductivity, especially uh, super clean motor, because super clean motor are more, uh, you know, uh, light, uh, uh, lighter than uh, conventional motors. And the last one, uh, Nexans France. Nexans is a big company of uh, cables and wires. So they bought, uh, they bought some, uh, they buy, uh, uh, they buy, no, no, they bought, they, they sell, sorry, uh, uh, cable, uh, especially uh, YBCO cable for uh, electric grid and MGB2 wires. We make some MGB2 wires tests in our lab. And we have a big uh, help of DGA. DGA is this uh, Direction Générale de l'Armement. Uh, so it's linked to the French Army. If you are, if you need uh, to have some com contact with French Army, you have to have uh, linked with uh, DGA. Okay. So we have, for, for example, a lot of project with uh, DGA because they have a lot of money so it's interesting in terms of uh, if you produce some some real motor so you need a lot of money i speak about 100000 euros so the research research topics and expertise in my lab is uh, first characterization of materials it's more, more my job in in the group modeling uh, like frederick about uh, uh, an uh, analytical point of view and a numerical point of view. We have a big uh, topic on superconducting motors in terms of uh, thesis, number of thesis, and in terms of uh, money, you know. So, you know, for research, money is uh, uh, as important as uh, real, real research in terms of uh, academic research, so especially for uh, French Army. And we, we have uh, some uh, research on magnetic coupling transmission I will present. And uh, now we have a little, uh, uh, especially with Frédéric, some work about uh, uh, electrical uh, grid and, uh, for example, super fault current limiter. And we have also some little project on other applications, more academic uh, project. So in terms of motors, uh, design and realization, we made uh, five motors projects since uh, 2006. You have to know it's very, very important. If you have to compare with Japanese, with Chinese, uh, with especially USA, uh, because in USA, they have a lot of money with a lot of projects with no realization. I don't know why, but uh, 
perhaps they spend their money for other things. I don't know exactly, but we we made ready the motors. We, we, you will see. We have four realizations since uh, 2006. Two grants from Agence Nationale of Research, or Agence Nationale de Recherche. Uh, for example, one grant is around 300,000 euros. You have to translate in uh, in pesos. But, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> For us, it's a lot, okay? And most of our industrial conversion are on motors. So, second uh, things, uh, I will present some physics, but very basic. I don't know if you have some physician or physicist, physicist here, but uh, it's very basic. Huh? So, you have to know that there is two superconductor uh, features uh, for uh, uh, that everyone knows. Uh, it's no resistance for temperature below uh, critical temperature, you know. For example, here you have the curve, oh sorry, okay. Here you have the curve of the resi resistance or resistivity versus the temperature. So you see on this uh, material, it's YBCO, it's yttrium, bar barium, copper, oxide, okay. So you see the resistivity decreasing with the temperature and at this temperature around 90 degrees, you have no resistance here. So it's very, very important and uh, interesting uh, feature, okay? So this is the first uh, feature, and you use this, for example, uh, for the cable uh, and for the motor to make a big magnetic field. It's very important to have, uh, for example, a coil with uh, no resistance, to have no, uh, to, to no losses, okay? But you have another uh, effect, another feature, is the uh, Messner effect. This effect is that if you have a temperature um, uh, above the critical temperature, the magnetic field, here, here you have the magnetic field, line of magnetic field produced by, I don't know, a magnet, okay? If, if you have a superconducting material O here, if it's not superconducting because the temperature is too high, the magnetic field is inside the material, okay? If you reduce the, the temperature, if the temperature is below the critical temperature, you have now no more magnetic field inside. So you can use this feature, for example, to shield the magnetic field, okay? It's one of the applications. So this is the perfect Messner effect. But in real case, for example, in our case for cable, for, uh, for motor, it's not exactly the same case. Because if I put a, a, here something like a, a cylinder uh, with infinite length, here, if you put an axial magnetic field here, at the beginning you have a perfect Messner effect. This is the case here, you have magnetic field outside the cylinder and you have no magnetic field inside the cylinder. Why? Because you have in a very thin part of the cylinder, you have, you have a super current, very, very high current. It's, uh, you know, uh, thousands, thousands of amps by uh, square millimeter. Very, 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 very high. But the thickness is around one micrometer, I think. Okay, it's a London London uh, length, you know. So, but the problem, this is uh, okay. There is a, an error here, mistake. Uh, it's only if the magnetic field is below HC one, and HC one in terms of Tesla, it's around one milli Tesla. So, for our application for motor, it's not useful. Okay, it's useless. So, in the this type of superconductor, if you increase the magnetic field, you have a second step. In this second step, you have a big current. It's not super current. It's not one uh, a lot of currents, but it's a big current. It's, we say volumic current because it's more surface current in this case. You have volumic current, but shielding the magnetic field from outside. So you have magnetic field here and no magnetic field in, the, in this little part, okay? With a big current, but less than this little blue current, okay? And if you increase uh, the magnetic field, you uh, 
up to this HP. HP is a penetration, a complete penetration magnetic field. Okay. At this case, you have magnetic field everywhere in the superconductor, but it's uh, uh, always superconductor. Okay. And if you reach HC2, you reach to the normal state. So you have four steps. You know your F Messner effect here. You have penetration of the magnetic field, and between between these two two magnetic fields, you increase the magnetic field, and the number of uh, parts with uh, normal state parts increase until up to HC2. Okay. So we use this kind of modeling to to study our uh, devices. So you have to know there is uh, three criteria three criteria of uh, uh, what is a superconducting uh, material. So to be superconductor, you, you need to be uh, below TC, critical temperature, but also you have to, to be, uh, oh, there is an error here, <laughs> it's a below. So magnetic field has to be below BC, it's a magnetic critical magnetic field, and you have to be with little current, so little, not so little, but uh, a current below JC is the critical current density. Okay, so you can make like this a surface with the critical current, the critical magnetic field, and the critical temperature. Okay, if you are below this surface here, you are superconducting material. If you are above this surface, you are at normal state. Okay, so. This was just base of, uh, of superconductivity, no applications in electrical engineering. So you have to know for uh, application, you don't have a lot of materials. So you, you have, you can say three kinds of material and two main kinds of material. So the first uh, materials we use since I think the 60s, 50s, especially for high magnetic field. We used low temperature superconductor. When, you, when we say low temperature, it's below 20K. Okay? It's minus 200, uh, 205 uh, degrees Celsius. I don't know if you are on degree Celsius or Fahrenheit or something. I don't know. Okay. 249. Okay. So uh, you have two kinds of material we use. You have a lot of materials, but in terms of application, for our application for electrical engineering, you, you use we use only nobium titanium free uh, plus tin and nobium, uh, no, no, nobium tin and nobium uh, titanium. You have these two kinds. Here you have the critical temperature, the critical uh, magnetic field, and the critical current density. You have you you see that it seems that nobium tin is better than nobium titanium. But in terms of application, to make coil, to make motors, it's more use. Uh, you can use more easily this one. This is why all the MRI application coil, uh, uh, I don't know, um, motors are made with this kind of material. Because in the case of uh, nobium tin, to make a coil is very, very complicated. You have to make the coil, put in the furnace, and so on, and so on. So it's very, and you cannot remove it, and it's very fragile, and so on, and so on. So all the application at low temperature has been made with this kind of, um, of uh, material. But you have to know, for high magnetic field, Le more than 12, you have to use nobium tin at this temperature. You will remark that for all the application, you have to, re to imagine, you have to think about what is the temperature, what is the magnetic field, what is the current, what uh, is it easy or not to make the application, so uh, uh, quasion, what is the quasionic part, and so on and so on. So it, it's a multidisciplinary um, uh, problem. Okay. For example, you have here um, a wire. It was uh, for, I think, um, uh, nuclear fusion. Here you have different wires. It's around uh, two centimeters uh, width. Here you have some little filaments, and the filaments is very thin. You can have uh, almost uh, up to uh, down to uh, one micrometer. You know, very very thin. Uh, filaments of um, uh, nobium titanium or nobium tin, because if you have very small filaments, you have 
loss losses. Because in terms of losses, you have to understand that if you have no resistance, you have no loss. Okay? But if you have variation of magnetic field, variation of current, you, you can have AC loss. Okay? No DC loss, but AC loss. So, and for, to reduce these AC losses, you have to reduce the diameter of the filaments. Okay? So it was, it, uh, all these field, uh, kind of wires were, uh, has been made in the 70s, 80s, okay? Especially for fission. So to make this here, you have to, at the beginning, you put inside a cylinder of uh, copper nickel and copper uh, carbon, you put your nobium titanium, you close the cylinder, you make some uh, uh, extraction of this, so you produce a first hexagon of this, you put all this hexagon in another cylinder, and again, you make this, and this, and this, a lot of times, to go to this, for example, this billet is around uh, five centimeters diameter, you know, you have to imagine to, to pass for, to, from five centimeters to, to one micrometer, okay? So it's a great job, great job. So after that, you have to produce your, your wire and to make a very secret eating of this, uh, of this wire. So it's a very secret for each company. Okay, here you have the, the last one made in France in the 80s for AC application. Unfortunately, they don't, uh, they didn't uh, find any application for this wire. So, but, uh, th so they made this, but uh, no application. So they stopped this uh, in Alstom group uh, in the, the end of the 80s. So, I have one of these uh, wires in my uh, in my lab, but so here you have imagine that uh, here you have a diameter of 0 0.12 millimeter, and here you have filaments around uh, here it's uh, 0 0.5 uh, 0.6 micrometer diameter, so very very thin, and here you have big. Uh, wire of um, copper is in terms of it's due to the temperature. You have to stabilize this kind of uh, cable uh, wires in case of transition quench, we said, in, in superconductivity. So because of this wire, you can um, um, uh, cooling the filaments very good. Okay. So now, since uh, 1986, uh, 86, uh, we have new superconductor uh, called high temperature superconductors. It's high, it's not, you know, uh, 100 uh, degrees Celsius, huh? it's uh, uh, around 120 uh, kelvins, okay? So it's very low for you, but uh, it's very high for us, okay? And uh, this uh, superconductor has, has been discovered just by chance. They made some, you know, put some uh, um, yttrium, put some byron, test, yet it's chemistry, you know, it's like cooking, something like this, you know. You put this <laughs> in a furnace <laughs> and you have a material and they tested this in 1986 and it was superconducting material. No explanation until now, no explanation in terms of physics, you know. So we know that the it's a ceramic first, so in terms of to make a filaments with this, to make a wire, it's not so easy. Second problem, it's anisotropic. So in this direction, you have no a lot of current. The critical current is not so uh, high. But in this direction, plan AB, we say, we have, you can have a lot of current. So just one, uh, one plane to have big current. And evo another direction with a lot of losses. So it's very special for application, it's just not so easy. So you, they had to imagine how to use this kind of material. So the first application for this kind of material is bulk. So you put, you take this material, you make a powder, you know, you know, put in a, say, uh, in mold, mold, come on. Mold. In a mold, and you can have this kind of cylinder or pellets, okay? So, for example, one of the first applications for this is to 
Uh, it's currently for uh, LTS, no, low temperature superconducting coils. Okay. Between typically uh, liquid nitrogen to liquid uh, helium. But now, especially uh, in uh, Japan, uh, Sumitomo company, they make some wire with this. So for this, they take a um, cylinder of uh, silver, they put this powder, bisco, uh, bisco powder inside, and they made as a nobium titanium wire, okay? So they extract this filament, put all these filaments in this cylinder of silver, and so on and so on, okay? But they don't, it's very difficult with this kind of powder to make a lot of filaments. I think the best one was around 30, 30, 50 filaments, I think, okay? So it's just one or two, two times, okay? Two steps. With this, you put here in this machine, this machine, and you have a tape with this. So you can see, and after that, you have to go uh, in the furnace at very special temperature, you know, rise weight of temperature, so it's very secret, okay? So you make with this, with this, this kind of tape, it's, uh, the width is around uh, 5 millimeter. Here you have 0 0.5 uh, millimeter, okay? And you can see silver in white color, and in uh, black color you have the the ceramics of uh, Bisco, okay? Or ceramic of superconducting material. For this one, for example, uh, from Sumitomo, no, Sumitomo, the critical current is 200 amps at 77K. Uh, now you have another uh, conductor, superconducting conductor, it's YBCO. So uh, YBCO, it's yttrium, baryon, copper oxide. This one, it's uh, bisco, strontium, calcium, copper oxide. This one is more complicated because you make a deposition of superconducting material in a very thin, very thin, you know, uh, coat, okay? Here it's around one micrometer, okay? Or less than one, one, uh, one micrometer. And you need also a subs substrate of alloy plus a buffer layer, very secret, uh, you know, for each company. And on this, with this buffer layer, you can very, uh, very, uh, you know, organized uh, material here be because of this layer. So here is very simple image of the superconducting wire. In, in in reality, it's more complicated. Okay, so it's very secret for each company. The problem of this, you know, you have just very thin uh, part of uh, super clean material, so it seems very fragile. So, you know, you have a very organized material, but very thin. So for application, uh, it's not so easy. I don't, uh, I don't imagine to make motor with this kind of, of wire. It's my personal idea and personal uh, thinking. Okay, so to make this, they put some uh, uh, layer of uh, alloy, put some deposition with some special uh, uh, low, low vacuum buffer deposition proce process, very secret. After that, you put this, uh, uh, this one in this uh, devices with oxygenation for uh, this uh, oxide here. You need also uh, to have a special conversion here of to uh, IBCO. So I'm not a specialist of material, but it's very complicated, you know. I saw this in uh, companies, but I don't uh, have the uh, capability to, uh, to, to, to explain you a very finous, very um, good uh, explanation, and so on. So it's very complicated and very fragile. So in our case, we prefer to use Bisco wires and bulk. Why bulks? Especially with Frederick. We have this work with Frederick now. Uh, we can produce with this kind of bulk, like this. And you have one bulk here. It's around, you know, three to five uh, centimeters diameters. You can produce very high fi magnetic field. More and more than uh, permanent magnets, for example. Okay? OI, magnetic field. 
what for uh, for what purpose and how it works and how we made it and we you will see uh, we will see field cooling and pulse feed magnetization uh, this is here the curve of the magnetic field uh, at the surface of this kind of uh, permanent magnet made by super thin bulk okay you can reach uh, you will see up to 70 17 Teslas. You have to imagine a permanent magnet like this, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.2 Teslas, for example. We can reach with this kind of, it's three centimeters di diameter, you can imagine, you can reach 17 Teslas. You, ha you have to imagine, I don't know if there is some specialist of mo a machine, but you have to imagine a motor with 17 Teslas. It's, no, it's impossible for the moment, but now we have just to, to we want to reach up to four, five Teslas. But it's a revolution in comparison with permanent magnets. So in this little permanent magnet, you can have 17 <coughs> Tesla. Okay, but at the temperature of around 20, 20 to uh, 30 uh, uh, Kelvin. But for us, to obtain this temperature is not so difficult. Okay, we, uh, we have some um, capability in terms of cryo cooling and so on uh, yeah i will present just after uh, to cool down at 20 30 k it's not very difficult uh, it takes some money but uh, it's not so so difficult for us you know not for all the people but for us it's not so difficult okay so uh, for example at 30 k you can trap inside the uh, this uh, pallet you can try it uh, 15 Teslas. Uh, the behavior is different from permanent magnets. Normally, if, normally for permanent magnets, the magnetic field is around constant over the, the pellet, for example, for the permanent magnet. In the case of uh, permanent uh, uh, super thin material, it's more uh, like here, you know, it's like a, a cone, hmm? pyramid, pyramid. Uh, okay. You know pyramids in Mexico, I think. No? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, so it's like uh, like this, and uh, and you you can produce like this. The record, the uh, world record, is made uh, has been made by uh, Japanese, Mr. Murakami and Tomita, at 29 uh, Kelvin. It, it was uh, 17 uh, uh, Tesla between two two bolts. Okay. Uh, so, for us, for new machine, electrical, electrical machine, it is very promising. But the problem is, is how to put this kind of pellets, mechanized by the, the system, and put it in the machine. Okay, so it's very, very complicated. Because the machine is at room temperature, here it's at 29 kelvins. So, for application of motor, it's not so easy. Okay, so you have uh, another possibility. Okay, for what first? What purpose? Purpose? You you have to see that in Japan, they uh, Mr. Matsu Zaki made a, a motor with this with uh, axial magnetic field. You have here, you have some pellets like this, uh, three or five centimeters diameter, and you have some armature with magnetic field and you can produce like this a torque between the static part and the rotating part. It was made in uh, 2007. We have to, in our lab, we want to make this but better uh, in the next uh, few years. You can make motors first, uh, like this, but you can also produce magnetic coupling. So we have to imagine to replace this permanent magnet here by YBCO bulks. Here it's at room temperature with permanent magnets, and it's not super clean material here. But my colleague Thierry Lubin and some other guys published an article about the modeling of this coupling. Okay. Analytical. 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 We like analytical calculation in our lab. We are a little bit full, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, be it's better be because in, time of, in term of um, optimization, it's better to have uh, analytical formula and so on and so on, okay? And if you uh, earn uh, uh, time, you earn money. I think with companies, it's very important to have some guys 
uh, was working on the analytical model, okay? Because I, I think a numerical calculation is easier, no? But I think so. Depends on the. No, no. He's a specialist, you know. If you have some, if you need some analytical analytical formula for ma for um, machine electrical machine in the world, you have to speak with him, this guy. Okay, he's with me. Uh, I don't understand any uh, everything of his, what he say, but <laughs> no, it's uh, okay. Very impressive work. So he, model, he makes the modelization in three D in two D uh, of uh, coupling motor and so on. Very interesting. Okay. So what, how it works, uh, the base of the magnetization of the bulk is the lens law. I, I think you know lens law, okay? It's induced current and you, when you applied um, variation of film. Uh, any current. Any eddy current, okay. Okay, so if you have uh, eddy current in, uh, in this uh, uh, supercooling bulk, bulk made by uh, uh, variation of magnetic field, you induce current. But it, you induce current without, without resistivity. So if you produ produce induced current, you have rota rotation for thousand years, you know, centuries. Uh, okay. The const time constant of this uh, induced current is, uh, I think it's 100,000 years or something like this. Because there, is a, there are little losses, but very, very low for this uh, induced current. So, even if the applied field is null, so you uh, produce a field, you decrease the field, and the magnetic, when the magnetic field is null, the induced current inside are not null. Okay? So you can have, like this, a trapped magnetic field. Okay? As I said with uh, this pyramid, okay? Uh, the interaction between the current and the permanent magnetic field here produce some forces. Okay? So here you have to imagine you have some induced current inside, okay? And here you have the permanent magnetic field produced by the permanent magnet, okay? So the interaction, interaction between the both produce forces. And with this, you know, you have le levitation. So you, I will present you to you some application for train, for example. So, oh, we made it. So first, you have to uh, cool the system. So in general, you have three solutions. First, you need liquid helium. But the liquid helium is very expensive and the reserve uh, of liquid helium decrease, you know. So the price will be uh, increasing a lot. So you have to to try to do not have a liquid helium in your system. Second possibility is uh, liquid nitrogen, but the liquid nitrogen is not so good uh, because the temperature of liquid nitrogen is 77K and the uh, critical current, the critical magnetic field and uh, the critical um, temperature, uh, not temperature, the critical current uh, are not so good for application, okay? For example, uh, in terms of critical current, uh, critical current density for uh, bad uh, HTS material is around what you have with copper. You know, 10, 10 to 20 amps by square millimeter. It's, the difference is not so high. Okay? So we prefer to decrease the temperature. And so between helium, liquid helium temperature and liquid nitrogen temperature, you have to use cryocooler. What is cryocooler? It's like you when you, you have your coca and you, you need a, you know, cold temperature, you have a, a cooling system, you know. So in our case, we say cryo. Cryo, it's a cryogenic temperature. But it's the same. A fridge. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's our fridge, you know. More expensive fridge, but it's a fridge. Okay. Little bit more complicated, but, uh, for this, we, you have here one part of the system. We said the cold head or at this, part, you have uh, generally some copper here, at, at this part you have the temperature you, you can uh, select, okay? And you put your bulk here. And here you have a, generally a second temperature, okay? And here out, you have the outside at room temperature. And all these things is connected to a pump 
you know, to have uh, like I don't know exactly exactly the term in uh, inter thermodynamic uh, system. Um, like uh, it's a closed cycle. Closed cycle uh, system. Cycle. In the team, I am not a specialist of cryogeny, but my colleagues knows uh, that very well. So we are very lucky because in the last 10 years, we bought uh, uh, four, four of this kind of cryo cooler. You have to say that the, the cheaper, just cheapest is around 20,000 euros for one. And uh, the more expensive one is uh, 100,000 euros. Okay? You know, this is why, why we need money. You know? <laughs> okay? Just, you, you, you have to know that, you know, uh, for one system, it's around 50,000 euros just to magnetize one little pellet like this. <laughs> Okay, so it's it's very very complicated and very very expensive work. Okay, um, so you have to put to be sure that the cold temperature of the the pellet is a good one. You have to put this pellet inside uh, some copper. It's not copper uh, leton in brass 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 uh, in brass like this, and to be sure to have the same temperature around the, the pellet. Okay. So this job to have the cool temperature the, on the pellet is very very complicated. Okay, so we we measure at different points the temperature and the magnetic field. So you need some sensor specialist in um, so specialized on low temperature and high magnetic field. So it's it's uh, also very expensive. With this, we measure here, for example, all, we have special all probes all probes that uh, made for uh, low temperature when you you can measure the magnetic field at the center of the pellet at the edge of the pellet and so on and so on okay this is to uh, cool the pellet second you have to produce the magnetic field so in our case we have two uh, two systems to produce the magnetic high magnetic field uh, DC magnetic field. The first one is the homemade LTS called for Tesla with a diameter of uh, 10 centimeters. Uh, it was one of my projects in the last uh, five years, uh, 10 years, I think. Uh, because we made it by uh, ourselves, it was just 40,000 euros. Okay. So uh, if, we, if you want to buy this, it's more 100,000 euros. Okay. So. Yeah. I have two to sell. Okay. Actually. What what show. kind of uh, magnetic <laughs> field? <laughs> I stole from NMR people. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, it's a good ah, good deal. We can. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can deal. <laughs> yeah, after <laughs> yeah. after okay okay <laughs> okay. It's, so it's uh, just for to make for Tesla DC magnetic field. Uh, I, I said it's very uh, uh, more uh, expensive. Okay, and you put you know here. I, I I don't know if you can see, but you put your it called uh, your cold head in this part in a diameter at room temperature. So you produce a magnetic field with this, and, and you produce a very low temperature with this cryo cooler for the sample. Okay. So you have free temperature. You have the temperature of uh, the LTS coil at four test at four uh, kelvins. The temperature of the sample and the room temperature. Okay. And you fix. The temperature with the cryo, uh, the cryo cooler. The temperature of the sample. Okay. So I have two examples of magnetization. Here you have the magnetization of MGB2 um, bulk. MGB2 is uh, the temp critical temperature is between YBCO and um, uh, nobium titanium. It's around 40 Tesla, uh, 40 uh, Kelvins. So to produce permanent magnet uh, with bulks, you have two methods. The first is a zero zero field cooling. Uh, it means that at the at the beginning, 
you uh, decrease the temperature at the good temperature you want, okay? After that, you, you increase the magnetic field produced by the coil, and you see here the magnetic field at the surface of the pellet. So you, are diff you have a difference between the magnetic field, you uh, applied magnetic field, and the field in the sample. The difference is produced by the induced current. So you produce a magnetic field by the coil, and the induced current produced, um, because of Lenz law, you produce in the opposite direction, and you have a direction. Uh, so the difference between the two curves is an induced magnetic field. Okay? Here, you have uh, the limit of the uh, induced current because, because of the critical magnetic field. If you have too much current, you can uh, destroy the superconductivity. You understand? So here, you have no difference between the applied magnetic field and the, the induced magnetic field. So you have zero, so it's just do the, the limit of the magnetic field inside the superconducting material. After that, you decrease the, the magnetic field and you have at the end a field inside the sample, but not at zero field, but at a certain field. It's a trapped field. So at the beginning, you have no field inside the, the, the bulk. At the end, you have a trapped field. Here, it's around uh, two Teslas. Okay? So we wish. Uh, to have uh, two Tesla ma MGB2 uh, magnets, okay? So this is the first method. Uh, the time, it's okay, okay. The second method is uh, field cooling. So uh, here you, you, um, you put the magnetic field, okay? You don't see it here. After that, you decrease the temperature, okay? It's a little bit different. So here you have the applied field decreasing, okay? And the field inside the sample decreasing like this, up to uh, three, uh, down to three point uh, three uh, teslas. So with this, at uh, it was at uh, 60, uh, 60 kelvins. It's not so uh, down. It's not so um, uh, low. You have three teslas in, a, in this little sample. Okay. So you have to imagine the permanent magnets of three uh, point four uh, three uh, teslas. Okay, at six and sixty tes, uh, sixty kelvins is not so difficult to obtain. So now we know that we can make it. Make it. So we imagine to put this pellet in in a motor, okay, or generator. So the problem of this method of thick cooling or zero fill cooling, you need a DC uh, coil. Okay, uh, very uh, you know, large system, etc. You have to imagine to remove the system, resemble, remove the, you know, the, the all the from the air, cold head, put the sample, go to the machine, and so on and so on. It's, it's imp quasi uh, impossible. Okay, so we have uh, for application another method. So it's the name is uh, pulse field magnetization. So, in terms of machine and in terms of application like machine, the most convenient way is to magnetize the superconducting bullet to use uh, uh, to use uh, the pulse field magnetic uh, pulse magnetic field. Because with uh, if you have pulse field magnetic uh, pulse magnetic field, sorry, uh, you don't need a, a superconducting coil, just copper coil, little copper coil, and it works. Okay. You can also generate a strong magnetic field uh, while using a relatively small and simple coil, you will see. And the pellet can be directly magnetized in the application, or in the motor. Okay? This is why we choose this, uh, this method. For this, we have a system here, like you have the, the, the grid and 50 Hz for us, a transformer, you know, um, uh, converter, another converter. Um, converter. Converter? No, no, say rectifier. Rectifier. Rectifier, capacitor. And so you have, you energize the capacitor, you open the switch, you 
have the resistor here, so you close the resistor here and you have a pulse inside the coil and this, this coil produce a pulse magnetic field and you inside inside the bulk you have some induced current, okay? So you charge a capacitor and then you discharge the Exactly, uh, charge and discharge. Okay. So the problem is if you have a very fast charge and discharge in this case, it's uh, around 10, millites, 10 milliseconds, you produce losses. This is why it's complicated to choose a good rise weight to have heat, but not so much heat. And okay, you cannot uh, have a very, very, very fast uh, uh, system. So it's better to have not so fast. Okay. But uh, enough uh, fast to have not a lot of um, heating in the coil inductor. Okay. So here you have the uh, a kind of uh, coil here. It's uh, the name of these coils is um, Maxwell coils because with this kind of uh, coils you can produce a very you know homogeneous uh, magnetic field with this kind of ma uh, very uh, special uh, coils with three coils, one coils, second coils, and uh, third coils. Okay, like this. Oh, made huh? okay. We don't buy this uh, to General Electric or something like this. And we say, you see uh, this, and uh, <laughs> it's not industrial, industrial uh, device. Huh? Okay, this is the first step made by uh, my colleague um, Kevin Berger in France. And the second step is to put the system inside um, iron core, like in a machine. So we don't, uh, the second step is not directly to in a real machine, okay, electrical machine, because it's very complicated, you need a, a lot of pellets. So the second type, uh, step is made, it was made just with one bulk in one core. With the coil is here, you can produce some magnetic field and you have some field here. And it seems that, so here it's an experimental apparatus here, so you have here you have the pellet, here you have, you have the coil, and here you have the, the transformer. We use a uh, monophase, uh, monophase uh, transformer to do this. We cut this and, uh, you know, we have, you know, you need, if you are in, in our lab, you need some, uh, to have some capability in terms of practical, you know, you know to cut, you know, to eat. <laughs> in, in our lab, we need a brain, but also good hands, okay. <laughs> Both. Combination, yeah. Okay, and we put uh, on this, over this part, uh, an iron part, like this. Okay, here. With this, we produce uh, some magnetic field. So you are, here you have in red, the red curves, is an applied magnetic field, okay? And here you have the magnetic field, or this one is at the center. Here you have two old probes, and this one is it's at the center of the pellet. It was not the first some, uh, the first pulse, it's the second pulse, okay? Because we have to, to know if it's good to have just one pulse, two pulse, three pulse, and so on. It seems that the, the good number is two, two pulses. By uh, experimental uh, results also, but uh, we need modelization of this, modeling of this. So at the end, at uh, 77 kelks Tesla, we reach uh, 0 0.85 Teslas. It's not three Teslas and four Teslas because the temperature is uh, 77 K. At uh, this, at uh, liquid nitrogen temperature, you cannot reach more than uh, this, okay? So you have to decrease the temperature. It's the next step, okay? So the next... Uh, uh, slides are on uh, superheating electric motors because our team is uh, one of the best uh, team in the world about electrical machine. In Europe, you have Siemens for industrial partners, okay, but uh, for uh, academic, we it is just us, I think, perhaps. A little bit in in Manchester, in uh, in uh, uh, who British. Something? Who something? No. Think about, I think, but uh, to make this, uh, we are the, the only one. Way. Okay. You have more projects, especially in, uh, in China, in Japan, and uh, Korea now. Okay. In US, it's uh, over. Okay. Because uh, no more money for applied superconductivity in general. Okay. And in cable, and you know, in cable is the same. Okay. If
if you have a, a company in Mexico can make some car cable, it's better than US. Yeah. <laughs> there is, there is it's a, it's a goal, good, good, good goal to make to make more better than US, no? Yeah, yeah Mexican. I think now with the with the with the war. Yeah. Maybe even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, since the, 19, um, the, eight, the 19th, you have some projects, but not a, a lot. You have eight projects in, uh, in USA, but now it's uh, over, I think. It was American super big companies, but I think, I think it's over. No, they don't do okay. they, they had a project for boats. Boats? Yeah, I saw, I saw but a lot of projects. It was uh, business, business okay. with business, uh, saddle cars. Okay, but now? No, no, it's, ah, it's over. Been, uh, okay, it's twelve years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now US, it's it's over. Okay, so now you have some project in uh, in our case. It's not more. It's not free now because it's an old uh, slide. It's uh, five. Okay, and you have also five in uh, Germany by Siemens. Okay, and you have a little one in Manchester here. Uh, free in uh, Russian, with, in Russia, but it's very secret. Okay, they don't make a lot of communication about this, and a lot of in Japanese. The the first the countries in in country in the world about machine in applied superconductivity in general. It's uh, it's um, Japan. Okay, and free in Korea. But now I think there is a, a lot of project in China. Okay. Um, why we use uh, superconducting electric motors? First, you increase the efficiency and the massive power. Okay, this is why uh, Airbus Group want to do this in uh, our uh, their factories. Uh, it's only good for for us. I th we think that it's only good for megawatts. Okay, this is why uh, you need a big big plane and not uh, for low uh, small plane. It's not very applicable. Okay. So more for boats and submarines. This is uh, I write I wrote this before we had the contract with Airbus. So I have to change these slides. <laughs> now we, I have to put uh, airplane, aircraft, and so on. I need more days. Please, Airbus, I need this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now you have to put uh, aircraft here. But now, normally, because uh, the, the, the weight and the price of the cryogenic system is very high, so but it's not so high if you increase the, the power food, okay? So the, it's a compromise between the price, the weight, and uh, of all the system. So we had a project with uh, General Electric. It was, at the beginning, Alstom motor, after converting, after General Electric, okay. Someone bought the company and, and you know sell to the other one and so on and so on. So, you know, it's a capitalism. You know. So now it's General Electric. So in Nancy they stop everything about superconductivity now. It's finished. Okay, it's over. It's only in, uh, in Great Britain. Uh, so in uh, 2011 we. St we st we finish this project of uh, synchronous motor, superconducting super super synchronous motor. With some... You build something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we put, for example, we make... Uh, uh, we don't build, uh, but uh, General Electric built and we make the test, for example. Okay. So here... You have my, it's for example, this oscilloscope here yeah, is mine. Okay. Ah, so okay, you come with I, I have the name on the oscilloscope here. Yeah, so uh, it was made with me and uh, Professor Levesque and Malika. Okay. All this system, because it's very funny because all these big companies are, have a lot of money to make a lot of things, but not to buy just one oscilloscope and one uh, FET converter or something like this. I don't know why. So. Uh, so even the case, even the, uh, the screw the screwdriver something. I don't, okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's, you come with your toolbox. exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have the prototype here. So you have the motor here, plus all this kind of it's cryocooler. You have the cryocooler. 
you know, inside you have ne neon um, gas and neon liquid, liquid neon. A second project with uh, Jemont Electric, uh, it will be finished in 2000, this year, I think. Okay. So now we have this big cryo cooler of 100,000 euros and to, to um, cooling the, it's a project of one pole of one megawatt motor, just one pole to begin. Okay. Big project. So it's a national project, national money. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, uh, lab, uh, we have some little projects. Especially, we are specialists of to combine motor and magnetic coupling. Here, you have uh, a stator, it's an axial uh, magnetic field. So you produce field in this direction. So here with this, with this static part, you produce a rotating magnetic field like this. Okay, okay. Okay, so you produce a rotating magnetic field, and here you have DC magnet, DC uh, coils here uh, um, with some currents inside DC current. So these coils will um, uh, 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 follow follow the magnetic the magnetic field produced by the static part. Plus you have some coils here in this part, and here you produce a torque between this and this, and this and this. So you can transmit the torque without contact. This is one uh, of the principal uh, uh, application um, interest of this kind of magnetic uh, uh, coupling. So advantages, you increase the compactness, you have a better efficiency, and you can tr transmit the torque without contact. Because in terms of uh, mechanics, it's very difficult to, to transmit the torque between the cold part to the hot part. Uh, the part in terms of temperature, okay? So this is why we prefer to use a non uh, contactless uh, system. So this is the, sa the same system, but uh, the real system. So here it's more, it's vertical because it's more, it's, it's simpler to use cryostat uh, because it's liquid, so it's better to have, uh, to have a vertical system, okay? But, uh, but it's, uh, it was a PhD uh, thesis. Huh? So the PhD student make all the modeling calculation uh, made by uh, uh, himself, uh, himself all the system. Okay. They assembled it with the experiment. Exactly. In he three made, years. Uh, yeah, in three years. Okay. Okay. Another one. It's a flux barrier synchronous motors. Motor. Uh, you have Helmholtz coil like this. You know Helmholtz coil, I think, with no resistivity, no, no resistance, so you produce magnetic field without resistance, without uh, losses. Normally, with Helmholtz coil, you have ax you have axial magnetic field, but here you put here a superconducting screen or shield, okay? So you cannot have you cannot have some uh, magnetic field between this and this because it's a shield, okay? So because of this, the magnetic field is on this direction, in here you produce a north pole, okay, and at the opposite side you have a south pole. So you have a, a two poles machine, two pole inductor, okay, and uh, two pole motor is not so difficult to make. But if uh, with this system you can produce many Teslas, up to ten Teslas, you can imagine a machine with ten Teslas. I know you have soft, so, uh, north, no, soft, north, soft. If okay. you produce with yeah, vertical, okay. Uh, this is uh, one of our characteristic in our lab. We have foolish ideas sometimes. So, okay. uh, with uh, some cup of wine, or you know, oh. at the end of the, yeah. the night, we have some stupid ideas. But <laughs> yeah, wine, <laughs> and uh, after that, we have to produce. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> We have to make the article to write. And yeah. Okay, <laughs> I have to start. To, have I have to stop the wine. For have <laughs> <laughs> you have tequila for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you put this system, this inductor inside, and you have the induced part. Okay, that rot that's rotating in our case. Why? Uh, so here you have the north pole and the south pole. It's a magnetic field huh? plus minus four teslas. And here you have all the system 
with uh, the liquid nitro nitrogen um, uh, tank, okay? The same oscilloscope as uh, with General Electric, and <laughs> well, just one. <laughs> and you have the load here, and you have the motor here, so the motor is like this. So, because uh, uh, it's a cryostat with Li helium, we prefer to use static inductor. So it's an in, in, in inverse machine, you know. It's a wheel, like a wheel, okay? So you have the uh, static inductor with the, I think in this case it was two Teslas, okay? And here you have induced port rotating, okay? It was made by a company, okay? Because the mechanic part, we are not specialists of the mechanic part, mechanical part. So it was a, a good project, okay? In, in here you have the, the load, it's a DC motor, you can use as a load or as a generator, okay, as a, a motor. Okay, magnetic coupling, so this is the image uh, I said, okay, with permanent magnet, you have north, south, north, south, and so on, and you can uh, transmit the torque without uh, um, contact, but you can imagine also to produce gear, you can uh, transmit the torque, and plus you can reduce uh, the speed, for example. So for application for uh, cars and so on, that so we we try to to sell this to to Peugeot, Renault groups, but they don't have interest for the moment. Okay. So you have no contact. For example, if you have um, uh, a big change of torques, you can if it's uh, direct, you can destroy. You know, in this case, you don't destroy. This is one of the important things to, to understand in this case. You don't destroy this. And to produce different uh, speed, you have uh, permanent magnets here, so uh, north, south, and so on. Here you have a lot of uh, number of poles. And be between these two uh, permanent uh, kind of permanent magnets, you have ferromagnetic uh, pieces. And if you choose a good number of ferromagnetic pieces you have you can reduce the, the speed there is a formula for this huh? okay so we want to try the, now there's the thesis in in our lab about this plus plus motor okay now uh, the last wait uh, okay it's okay 10 minutes okay it's the yen okay so some uh, some words about uh, superconducting cables, current limiter, magnetic storage in electric uh, grid. Okay, it's for power. Okay, uh, application. So for example, you have to know that there is some uh, project uh, since I think uh, 2018, uh, 90, 90, 90 something like this. Lipa. End of the 90s. I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Storing 2000. So in in um, in, uh, come on, in USA you have uh, Lipa uh, project, Albany uh, project, Albany power cable, Columbus power cable. It's uh, what you know. Uh, it's uh, between uh, you have uh, in this case. Uh, it was 140 kil kilovolts. Uh, okay, it's very difficult. So in this case, it's not like this. It's three uh, cables separated. Okay. Not in the same, so it's a wrong uh, image here. Yeah. Uh, and normally, uh, for uh, all the projects, is more between 10, 10 uh, kilovolts to 50 kilovolts. So I was in Karate, the Karlsruhe Institute for Technology uh, in Germany, uh, with a German accent. Eh? It's a little almost. bit hard. <laughs> almost, huh? <laughs> uh, I was uh, doing four months in this uh, group. Uh, because uh, first, it is, it is very important in Europe to, to be a few months in this uh, organize, organization because it's uh, the best one. Okay, they are on in all the the conferences about oh, superconductivity. They are manager and so on and so on. It's good to have good friends. Okay, <laughs> in Europe. So uh, I was in um, uh, so they made fusion uh, in, in the University of uh, Karlsruhe. And fusion, uh, it was a fusion of university and a research center. Uh, so the project, it was uh, with one kilometer length uh, high, high voltage. High voltage is 10 kilovolts, huh? it's not so high. Huh? Uh, you have three phases concentric cables, okay? Uh, you have 20 BISCO tapes by phases, by phase, three phase current limiter, 
10 kilovolts, 40 megawatts. It was uh, one of the most important projects in Germany this last uh, five years. Okay, so it was made with uh, uh, Nexans Group. Okay, they made no, Nexans Group made the, the cable. Okay, uh, KIT made the modeling. Okay, and the measurement of a small sample uh, with uh, with me, and Irivie is a company of electricity. Okay. So with this, we use uh, Bisco tape, four millimeters width, with a critical current of 170 uh, amps. You have uh, here the photography of the real uh, uh, size, uh, not the real size, the real um, sample we use. So here in black, you have the superconducting Bisco, okay, material. Here you have, uh, in, in white, you have silver, and here you have a, a stabilizer of copper. Okay, uh, you have to know there is some another application is superconducting current limiter in electric grid. So the limiter, what is the problem? The problem is uh, you uh, with the, the increasing of the powerful of the grid, uh, you have uh, you increase the short circuit current in electric uh, grid. For example, you increase you increase you then because of climate change, you increase the number of short circuit defaults and so on and so on. So if you increase the power flow of you, uh, the load, for example, on generator, you have to, to change the breakers, for example. Uh, you can, in this case, with current limiter, you can uh, keep the breakers and, and, and you add just one current limiter at, at the good position. The question, the question is, where is the good position? Okay. Uh, this is uh, under research. Okay. So one of the solutions to limit the current is to use this kind of current limiter. So here in blue, here, you have a default here. And if you don't have current limiter, you have a very high current. And you need a big breaker, OK? If you use current limiter, you don't, you limit the current. And the maximum value of the current is not so high. So the breaker has to be, can be smaller, OK? So cheaper, OK? This is a, the main idea of the using of a current limiter. So, for example, here there is a, um, a sample, uh, sample a current limiter made by my PhD thesis uh, with uh, Ecole Polytechnique de, Mont de Montréal. It's a chair PhD between the, the, two, uh, the two labs. Okay, uh, this is a project, uh, the last project in, in Europe about uh, current limiter. It was an EcoFlow project with uh, KIT in Karlsruhe. Um, a company of electricity in, in Spain, I don't uh, remember the name, Andesa, Andesa Group, okay, and uh, with uh, EPFL, Lausanne Group, uh, Lo Lausanne uh, Lab, and Grenoble Lab, okay. I was not in this uh, in this project, huh? uh, because we are not specialists in our lab of current limiter, we are specialists in on machine. So it was a big project, and you can, they want to try to put a limiter in this, at this place, just after the transformer, or in between the two transformers, okay? Uh, they don't know exactly what is a good, they do two applications, it seems. I'm not a specialist of electric grid, but uh, you can use here or here, uh, and that's it. So in this case, in this case, I, I think they use in um, Mallorca. Uh, and in this case, they use it in uh, Slovakia. They want to use it, but uh, it doesn't work. It didn't work. So they stop after the project. No money. So, because they don't, in a problem of, I don't know, normalization, I don't know, standardization, I don't know exactly, there is some problem in, in Mallorca, so they stop the project. They built the device, but they stop the project. No. They don't install it really in the electric grid in this case. And plus, they have some, uh, some problem between the partners. Uh, it's a real, I think, the real things uh, of the uh, stop, uh, the end of the, this project. So you can also produce uh, storage. So superconducting magnetic storage. It's, uh, the name is uh, called the uh, SMES. Uh, the principle is you have the, the grid here. Here you have a product uh, converter. You have to to know that uh, you need uh, more DC. It's better with DC current, DC magnetic field, because you have no losses. If you have EC, you have losses. So it's better to have only DC. So you need a DC to AC, you know, uh, converter. And here you have a coil without resistivity. 
we are f without resistance. So you can store some energy. Uh, for example, you can stabilize the grid at some points, like capacitors. Okay. But with uh, this kind of uh, superconducting uh, magnet, normally you can produce more, you can uh, storage more, en more energy. But now there is no more project on this. Okay. Okay. Right. Just, you have to know that there is a, the big, uh, uh, the most important uh, device uh, with superconductivity is MRI. I think you know it's at 4.2 4, uh, kelvins in liquid helium with uh, nobium titanium coil. So you have uh, many hospitals in the world, some of these kind of devices uh, since the 80s. Okay. This is why the, the, the company who made the, the wires uh, earn money because of MRI, not with motors, for example. Also, a big project for uh, companies of uh, wires, supporting wires, is uh, ITER. It's a fusion uh, nuclear uh, reactor. Okay, so f you have to know to produce. Here, you have to produce a magnetic field like this. Okay, so you, you have to produce in a big, big volume, big, big magnetic field. And, and this is made only, you can make this only with superconducting uh, coil, with superconducting uh, wires. So you have to imagine here you have. One person, two meters. So you have to imagine the, the, the reactor here with the, the, the plasma. Okay. So the biggest um, uh, team on uh, in the world in, in terms of uh, num numbers, number of members is on uh, fusion. Okay. In uh, Kadarash in France, in Japan for for fusion in, in because the, the ITER is will be in France. But the number of companies, number of uh, uh, labs uh, are working on this in the world. Okay. One of the LTS coil, you know, it was in Karate. So you have to imagine that in this, you have liters and liters of liquid helium. So you need a big, uh, big tank of liquid helium. So another application is the magnetic levitation train. You have one in... Uh, in China, for example, and one in Japanese, in Japan, uh, Maglev. Maglev is it's in China, I think. China. But you have now you have one in Brazil, a little one. Cobra. Cobra. Okay. But I have no photos of this. Okay. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. If you have questions, and do you have any, any questions? We have the room uh, until 2 in the afternoon, so... Uh, okay, uh, my first question is about... Uh, you have a cryogenic cooler. It's complicated, uh, I understand. And how to put the, this bulk into the machine to, pro to, to make the motor? So how to, it's complicated to, to make a cryocooler for the motor? Uh, it's complicated. We didn't make this, make this now, so we have to do this. We need a Mexican PhD for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we just make in a little transformer, you know. It was the last uh, PhD in this case. It was the last step we made. But uh, normally, uh, first, we need a PhD student, okay. We need money to make the motor. So I tried to make a project. I think uh, we need uh, 100,000 euros for a little machine. So we had some ideas to make with cheaper price, but uh, it's complicated. But we can normally um, between the cryo the head cold. It's a good good question. What is the head cold? Cold head for between what they made in system. For example, there is some MRI with MGB2 with cryo cooler. So you have the cold head, but you don't put the bulk uh, directly to the to the head, the cold head. Cold head. You put some, um, you know, copper like this, um, the, the plaque. Copper strips. Copper copper strips to to the to the machine. You know, with cryostat. It's not so simple, but you have to imagine you 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 uh, you catch the calories with this. So you have the machine, the bulk, like this, 
I suppose to be uh, like this. Well, like this, okay? It's my machine, okay? One pole with uh, one permanent magnet. So you have to imagine you have the coil plus you have copper just here. Just here, you have some copper stripes, okay? And go to the cold head, okay? Just by, uh, conductivi by conducting system, huh? conductivity, thermic, com thermal conductivity. So it's not so easy. So uh, this is the first solution. Second solution, you have to imagine, you have your cold head, you have the system, and you make a, a motion of gaze. So you have, um, in, I don't know if uh, in the case of Ilcomap we made this with neon. Where is a neon uh, system? So here, you have the cooling system here, you have the cold air, uh, cold air here, and you have a system of inside the axis, you see, here you have a circulation of gas and uh, liquid. So you have gas uh, heated by the system, the gas go to the cold head, go in uh, liquid, liquid go, go back to the machine. So you need a circulation of gas or liquid. The best one is liquid. First, that is very expensive. Second is gaze, okay, less expensive, and the last one, the uh, the most cheaper, the cheapest, is uh, with conductivity. Okay, so you have this is the problem of our uh, our uh, problems. It's uh, very complicated. What is a good temperature? What is a good system of cooling? What is a good material? Okay, what is a good design? Because you need, because you have temperature, you have critical current, and you have a magnetic field. So you have to be sure on all the wires of superconducting matter, um, superconducting uh, wires, it is below TC, below BC. So you may, you need modeling. You need modeling. It's an obligation. It's okay? I <laughs> Yes, I have another question. Uh, is uh, about the 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 future of the of these uh, devices. Uh, do you think that the current limit, the Ford current limiter, has a possibility to be the first? Uh, it is done. It, is, it, is, it has done. Huh? In, uh, in, it, has been done yeah. it has been done in uh, in uh, Ampa City project. Uh, in Lipa, for example, I don't know. They, they want to put uh, in Lipa one one current limiter. Uh, uh, for example, in the case of, uh, in this case, you have a current limiter. Uh, can I explain? Um, normally, it's to reduce the price of the breakers. If you don't want to change the breakers, you won't increase the powerful, but you don't change all the breakers, you change just, you put just one current limiter. It seems that it's one of the possibility of application. But it's not uh, a problem of the problem of guy of electric grid, you know. We need, we we know that the current limiter is working, okay. So now you have you you need ideas from the other guys, from grid, <laughs> from grid. Guys that, uh, guys. So uh, my colleague from Nancy tried to to know where is the good position, for example, of the current limiter, because the, the price is not so cheap. So we have to to know where is a good position. It's not so easy to know. At high voltage, low voltage, between transformer, after transformer, we don't know. Okay. And do, do you think it's going to be easy for the fault current to be a normal device in the market of power systems, easier than the uh, power I cables of? Uh, I think I think it's probably uh, the, the next the next industrial thing in superconductivity will be more. Oh. Focal limiter than cable, I think. Uh, uh, my personal point of view is focal limiter is more, will have more success in power grids in the near future than the cables. Uh, because I, there uh, is a big, uh, there is a necessity to, uh, to address the stability of the, of the uh, aging uh, systems. Transmit the power, distribute the power. Except, the except for fusion. Yeah, except for fusion. for fusion. Because you have all the system of cryocooling uh, in the fusion nuclear uh, reactor, so you can use cable. 
So in the case of uh, CERN, yeah. in, in Switzerland, they want to use a cable between the transformer and the system. So it's, it's linked to a reactor, nuclear reactor. So in the future, if you have a lot of fusion reactor, you will have a lot of cables, okay? And, and we're going to replace HVDC by superconductivity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know the application in the 10 years, 20 years, next 10 years, I don't know. Okay. Someone else, uh, someone from uh, this generation of students? No? We have... Uh, I think the same one. I, I, I want to make the, the same one. The next step is make the both magnetic, magnetic, magnetic permanent, permanent okay. magnets by pulse, and the, the next step to, for the project is the best way for the for make permanent magnet in your opinion. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you have to know that for super, superconductivity it is expensive, uh -huh. so you have to have a, a revolution. Uh -huh. You know, you don't have to go to 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.4 Tesla to 0 0.6. Yeah. Okay. okay, you have to go to four Tesla, yeah, ten yeah. Tesla. Okay, yeah. it was the same for uh, MRI. Uh, you cannot make uh, copper coil for MRI. It's impossible because the, the size will be too much wow. and so on. And the powerful. So, so we have to con convince a lot of people, you know, students, okay, to go in uh, in France to to make some PhD, stu you know, study, uh, political, and so on and so on. So. We need people. We need money. Please, please. <laughs> and the next question is, uh, uh, on personal opinion, is the the um, the project may for making you know, motors for the cars and the hybrid hybrid models because it's superconductor is expensive and the battery uh, limits the mo the electrical mo motors for the cars. And I think this could be should be an an hybrid. Yeah. For example. Uh, I just talked just a few, few seconds about, about MGB2. You have to know that this kind of, uh, of MGB2 pellets is uh, cheap, mm -hmm. it's uh, quick, you can make a lot of in a uh -huh. few, uh, few minutes. Uh, in opposite with IBCO, for one bulk, it's, uh, I think it's three days for one. You have oh, to imagine. Good. Okay. So it's, it's, this is why it's uh, so expensive. The time to do this plus the material. In terms of uh, well, MGB2, magnesium is, is common, and power cool. it's yeah. common. The problem is the critical temperature is 40 oh, yeah. Kelvin. Yeah. So you need a cryo cooler but or you need liquid helium. It could be an, 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 an hybrid then made an, an, an interface to work the, 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 the two things. For, 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 for a uh, moment, I have more questions than, than uh, answers, you know, for, for, electrical, for application. For electrical uh, cars, the limit is the battery is to wait for for the for the car for the oh, efficiency. For example, to mag magnetize this kind of uh, with PFM, we know that it doesn't work. Ah, yes, for right. MGB2, if you put very low speed um, magnetic field, it's, it works. But in there, if you put a PFM, you have some problem of stability. Okay. I didn't. Uh, Show, yeah, you show, show this, nice but uh, yeah, I, I have a nice curve about quench during the pulse. So it's for the moment it's impossible to use PFM. So it's impossible to to put it in a ma machine, for example, to have a good permanent magnet. So it's uh, it's now we we have to to improve this. So we have a collaboration a collaboration with Sarlan plus Japanese and uh, plus Caen and. Well, because it's 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 from uh, material, you know, chemist to engineers. So yes. question, answer, question, answer, and so on and so on. Okay. But it, it's research, you know. Research. Yeah. If you want to make a, to have a, a product, you have to go to industry. You know? <laughs> we are researcher, we are not uh, engineer. Okay. Well, we we need more imag imagination than in engineers. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks. It's open, it's an open question. Hi, I, I read an article that the researchers, propo research researchers propose uh, an 
modular cryostat. So I want to ask, uh, ask you uh, what is, if what that is modular modular, modular cryostat? cryostat that you can put in in the different temperature ah, for uh -huh, yes for for synchron for permanent no for uh, salient pole pole synchronous machines. Uh, I read uh, an article about that that they propose uh, a, cry a modular cryostat in the in the spaces of in, of the uh, yes for the uh, this is one of the idea now it's to because you you have three materials okay at three different critical temperature you have uh, different cooling system. So perhaps in uh, in a system you can have um, MGB2 wires, YBCO wires. No, it depends of magnetic field temperature and so on and so on. But it's more complicated, you know. If you have different carrier state, different temperature and so on. So you have, you can imagine everything. Okay. It depends of if you have a lot of money, no problem. Okay. It's like you know, Chinese had a lot of project, especially on grid, but they have a lot of billion of euros of, you know, dollars. So they made a lot of stupid things, but very, very expensive. If you have a lot of money, no problem. Okay? Yeah, when you have <laughs> so, less money, you have to think Yeah, more. exactly. In <laughs> France, we have no more money, so you need ideas. <laughs> no, okay. I think, uh, no, it's a good solution. But, uh, yeah, but I think the, the modular cross-tech, because it's hard to cool down the whole structure, no? That was the idea in the article. Yes. Yeah, if you have the, the article, no, you have a big motor, so you have to cool down all the temperature. temperature. No, I have, no, I'm thinking more like you imagine you have a big ah, motor, you, like a okay. megawatt motor. One pole, one yeah, coil set, one pole. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think it's more in this. It's due to the size, I think. Yeah, yeah, because it's too big to to make sure that the temperature is homogeneous in the system. But I think that's the idea. This is in, why uh, uh, in super power the uh, ah, super power thing, uh, okay. they, I think they consider more than one crosset because you imagine sure. you have fifty yeah, yeah, poles. Yeah. So uh, it's a big machine, uh, fifty pole, one megawatt. Uh, uh, this is uh, what why the super applied superconductivity is interesting because it's from material to engineering. This is engineering. Okay, one career start, five, ten, and so on. So you need a, a team, uh, except Frederick. <laughs> He's working alone, but <laughs> in general, you need to, <laughs> in general, you have to, to work. So he, yeah, he has an inter, international team, you know. It's, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Each of the article, I think it's, it was, it is super power. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. remember. Okay. Which, uh, some other questions? Someone uh, from this generation that is not one of my students or my past students? No. So I, I would like to. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, not one of my <laughs> students, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. It has to be a pretty good question. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, I would like to understand better your first model of motor uh, with a cylindrical rotor. This one? Or? No. Uh, yeah, this one? No, before so, that. Before? Yeah. This one or uh, this one or this one? It's the same, huh? Mm. It's a fuel with a cylindrical rotor in a vertical way. Uh, I don't know. This is the magnetic coupling? But magnetic coupling or this one? No, before the, uh, this slide. Before, before. No, no, no. It's finished. It's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I think I, it's after, no? This one? Ah, yes, yes. Exactly. Ah, it's the most interesting because it's RRD. So. <laughs> okay, the cryogenic uh, temperature is just applied to the rotor, right? Sorry, I didn't understand. What do you mean? The temperature, cryogenic temperature, is just applied to the rotor, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And outside is ferromagnetic with, uh, with copper, copper wires. wires. Okay. 
This part is rotating, okay? Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. This one is static. Ah, okay. And in, a, in the cryostat, but vertically, okay? Ah, okay. And this ring is a superconducting material? Super uh, in gray? In gray? The well, this one. ring? Um, ah, uh, you have two L-mold coil. Uh, Two yeah. small coil in um, nobium titanium superconducting uh, wires plus ah. a plate, a plate of uh, superconducting material. Uh, as, as a shield. So you use the two features. You remember no resistivity to make to do uh, high magnetic field with this plus shielding. Mm. Messner effect. Okay. Yes, it's just like it looks like a ring instead of a winding. But ah, it's a plate. No, I hear for a ring. You have the no, magnetic no. field inside. So okay, it's okay. like this. Uh, uh, um, our plate is like this, made by uh, ATZ in, uh, in Germany. Mm, okay. It's, um, it seems that it's a maximum uh, size of this kind of plate because it's ceramic, so it's not so easy. We can use as a plate to, to cook or to, to eat, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's difficult, but they can make this. Also, we imagine to have a big motor with this kind of, uh, with, you know, um, uh, puzzle, no? puzzle, puzzle yeah. of a uh, little plate like this. We, we worked on this to make a big, you know, you have to imagine if you want a, a shield of one meter, you can, you can do this with a little plate. So, but there is a problem of um, uh, leak, leak of magnetic leak field, leakage, leakage of the ma magnetic field. So it seems that it's, you need the two um, coats, coats, um, uh, yeah, coats, uh, coats. Uh, to have uh, no leakage, not not uh, so much leakage. So you have to much. If you increase the uh, the size, it's, it's very difficult to have big big plates. It's better for you. Okay. Yes, good. Thank you. Okay. You have the opportunity to practice your English. <laughs> Ask, Ask me. some answers. <laughs> Show off a little bit, no? For the new generation of students. We can go to French or? Yeah, hmm? maybe French can help. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Not Spanish because Not Spanish. Hablo na, no, no, Sp no, no there Spanish. Is no, 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 hablo Spanish. If there is no further question, we can thank again the speaker. Thank you. Merci. Je vais te donner. Uh, tu fais la photo? Uh, oui, on va faire la, la photo, c'est par là. D'accord. So if you have a question afterwards, yeah, yeah, Bruno is on. here until uh, we have until the lunch. Good evening. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have the lunch. Good evening. Good night. Yeah, no? the night. Yeah, we yeah, speak yeah. about As night. Well. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the photo. Yeah, you put it.